All right, I figured I'd show this while I have it out. This is a Soviet SKS rifle, Type 45, I believe they call these things. Now, I'm not a huge SKS collector, but uh, I did pick up a few back in the day. Mostly Chinese, but I do have a Yugoslav, and I do have this Soviet model here. I've had this a long time. I bought this at a gun store in 1994, right when they started to come available on the market. And as you can see, it's refurbished very much in the Soviet style as they did the most in hordes. It's uh, got the same red shellac. It's got the same force matched numbers and, of course, that black paint finish. And this one is a 1950 Tula. As you can see by the Tula star, just like on the most in rifles in 1950s the date. This is actually old enough not to have a chrome line bore. There were uh, three or four of these showed up in the store at the time. And in 94, there were still quite a few Chinese uh, imports available cheaply. And this was like $50 more or something like that than them. And it had the blade bayonet, which I noticed right away. And I thought, huh, why not? You know, I wasn't really collecting Soviet weapons at that time, but I figured, what the hell? There was nothing else on the shelf that date I was interested in, so I grabbed it. I'm glad I did, because these things are worth a fortune now. Or at least a hell of a lot more than I paid for it. And you know, it's pretty much like any SKS. Not a whole lot of difference here, except, of course, that blade bayonet. It's made in the Soviet Union. It's hardwood stock. Is I believe these are birch stocks. And, of course, like I said, they're all force match numbers and all that stuff. Just like any Soviet SKS is or, or other refurbished Soviet weapon. doesn't matter if it's the SVT-40 or the Mosin rifle. They're all refurbished in the same way post-World War II. And I haven't done anything to it. There's no weird magazines on there or stupid-ass... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, scope mounts on it. It don't work worth a damn. I learned all that stuff on the Chinese models. Has a Soviet sling. The original sling that came with it. Somewhere I have the oil bottle and the cleaning kit and the uh, the bullet pouch too, the clip pouch. And I have fired it a few times. 762 by 39 of course. And uh, it's fairly accurate. You know, for what it is. You can't expect uh, the same performance you're going to get out of a larger 30 caliber rifle, bolt rifle. But uh, they're not bad. If you can find them anymore, which really you can't. Now, of course, I wished I bought all three or four that were on the shelf. If that had been the case, I'd be selling them all now, making a nice profit. This one I picked because it was 1950. It was the oldest date of the lot. And I figured, that, you know, that appeals to me more than some of the newer ones. Now, obviously, this never fought in the Korean War, but, uh, you know, it's interesting still. It's dated to that time period. And similar rifles as this were shipped to... Uh, the North Koreans, and they did use them in that war, and I believe some might have gone to Vietnam too, but I never really researched it that far. And uh, the other stuff we got here is just some bayonets I picked up here and there. This is a this is a Spanish bayonet. You know, it's Artilleria Toledo. I haven't researched this one too much yet. It's typical Spanish. This will fit any of the small ring Mausers and all the Turkish Mausers, that kind of thing. Whatever you have, a lot of the South American Mausers. This one. Uh, yeah, well, it says artillery, I guess, suppose it is. It sure is held big enough. Had a nice leather scabbard. Sometimes these scabbards are disintegrated. This one wasn't. And I figured, huh, you know, that's, that's probably worth buying. So I did. It wasn't a lot of money. When I see bayonets cheap, I will buy them. Here's one that was cheap. That really surprised me. This is a, a matching German bayonet 1940. This is, this is the one I believe I showed in the flea market video. Oh, 41, is it? You know... It's waffen on there, it's got its original bluing, it's in beautiful condition. I don't believe this was ever issued, or if it was, it wasn't used very much. Maybe it's dated. Where the hell is it dated? I could have sworn there was a date on this. Ah, there we go. 1940. Yep, 1940. Uh, I saw that on a flea market table, and it was so cheap that, you know, I, I don't go out of my way to collect German bayonets, but uh, I do have a K98, I have two actually, and I figured, huh. You know, what the hell? It's in nice condition. The guy's just about giving it away. I'll take it. And here we have a grass bayonet. These are pretty common, too. This one's dated Paris 1880. It's got the scabbard. Of course, it's not marking. They rarely are. See, it's got the brass hilt on there. Nice wood. These look great on the wall. That's really where most of these ended up. Hanging on a wall somewhere in the hunting cabin or the lodge or whatever. Because they look good there. And, you know, they're, they're really long. This is like a two-foot long bayonet. It's huge. Goes on the 1874 Gross rifle, of which I do have one. And I have a matching bayonet for that one. Yeah, there's another one. This one actually walked in the door. I want to get rid of it. His price was 
extremely reasonable, so I said, what the hell, I have three or four ready, but I'll take another one for that. I mean, they are nice looking bayonets. They, they did see use in, uh, you know, the First World War to some extent. Pretty much any weapon the French had in their arsenals saw use in the First World War, and of course in their colonial empire. And a lot of these were imported by Bannerman starting sometime after the First World War, and probably before that. And they turn up at flea markets and tag sales, and no one knows what the hell they are, and you know, because uh, there's just not a lot of 1874 Gross rifles in circulation. There are in collections, but it's not a common item anymore at the flea markets, and no one really shoots them at the range, except a few nuts like me who like these ancient rifles and uh, making cartridges for them and all of that stuff. Now, here's another one. I saw a question the other day on one of the internet boards about. Uh, Nice comp compass. I think believe it was an Israeli compass at the time, but uh, this is a fake. Okay, it looks real nice. You know, it's a natural sign compass. You see these all the time. They turn up on the auction sites. They turn up, you know, at flea markets, and people think, "Ooh, wow, fifty dollars! Look at that brass. It looks great." It's fake. Okay, these are made in India, and they do work, I assume. But uh, don't go by what it says there, Stanley London or anything like that. It's definitely a fake. It's not uh, a 19th century original or anything like that. And if you can get it for 5 or $10, what the hell? They look good in the shelf. That's where this one's going. But uh, don't think you're buying a real antique. And whenever you see these nice compasses of, of this type, not necessarily the same one as this, but different ones, always research, research them carefully before buying them because there is an industry out there that reproduces these, mostly in India, not only there. And uh, some of them look very good, and, and like I said, they probably do work and everything, but they're not originals. So make sure you're buying an original before you uh, go grab one, because uh, you don't want to be burned by a fake. Well, there you go. We got the, uh, the SKS. I don't believe I've ever put this one up online. And uh, they turn up from time to time, and probably seen them and wondered, huh, I wonder why that one doesn't have a spike bayonet like my Chinese model does. Well, it's got its Soviet. Maybe one day I'll do the uh, Yugoslavian bayonet. Uh, excuse me, the Yugoslavian SKS too. But there you go. This is a bunch of stuff. Okay.